Good evening, guys and girls. Welcome to Overwatch Contenders Australia. It is a week for our final week of the regular season. Elfish Guy, the teams have been competing all season long. They've gone through opens, they've gone through trials, they played week in, week out, and this is the last week for these teams to get points, make their way through to the playoffs, and a shot at the big bucks. Is indeed, Ben, and the last week that anyone's really going to be able to challenge maybe the likes of Ground Zero, who so yeah. far are undefeated. Mm. That's one of the big storylines, I'd say, coming into this week, but uh, obviously plenty more going on here in Overwatch Contenders Australia that we will take a bit of a deep dive into tonight. Yeah, we certainly will. It's uh, It's been an exciting couple of months of, of Overwatch, to be honest, and it's been mm. fun to watch the teams make their way through, and I don't know necessarily whether at the start of the season we would have thought the Ground Zero would have got to this point where, you know, they, they're looking almost unbeatable right now. And my question is, are they going to go another week on top? Yeah, definitely did sort of hear the, the whispers that this was something that could potentially end up happening. And now that we're here, you know, it, it's not really a surprise. But yeah. you've got to say that's sort of hindsight being kind of 2020, yeah, right? You can never yeah, say yeah. that this is definitely what's going to happen at the very start of the season. I will say, though, that I think, yeah, it does seem like they're not really going to have any problems cleaning this week up as well. Uh, my concerns, I guess, if there was any, would be coming for, for the likes of playoffs and finals when we do get there because that's where teams tend to start to, like, power up a little bit, I'd say. Yeah, and, and that's what it is, right? Are there... You know, you, you can go through the regular season and do so on top. But if you aren't at peak performance when it comes to playoffs, it, you know, you can only get so far and then lose a match in playoffs. And it, it's all for naught, right? So yep. part of it is putting yourself in, in the best position uh, in a couple of weeks' time for that, for that playoff bracket. And the other part, obviously, is being at peak performance, ready to go. And, of course, having... Uh, the best spot through the playoff brackets to give yourself a shot. Yeah, definitely can't really go and say, you know, we did a fantastic job during the season. We were yeah. the champions of the season. Yeah. If you do, do end up losing during the final stages, right? What good is it winning every single week of contenders during regular season if you're not going to be able to back that one up in grand finals? Now, in hindsight, I don't think we've actually ever seen that. I think it has actually always been the winner of the season that has gone through as the, the victor of Overwatch contenders for that respective year. We've had, I, I know like a, a Mio last year, Mind Freak, for example, they did really well and yeah. got to the big stage and it was it was a struggle. Not going to have that problem this time around. For me, that's, that's going to be a big one. And how does it play out that maybe the pressure is less when you're not... I would say, of course, the pressure is less when you're not in front of a, a huge crowd. So we'll see how, mm. how that plays out. But um, still a few weeks till we get to that point. Tonight, though, let's go and take a look at our teams who are participating... Uh, across this week four of contenders. Now, again, uh, we've been very lucky each week to have content to be able to uh, show the story as a lot of these teams move through trials each week, uh, some of them moving back down, some of them moving back up. Obviously, uh, when you take a look at this, Ground Zero, the Drop Bears, Mind Freak G, and, of course, the Warriors now firmly sitting, uh, I think, in that top four. I think that's the, the story that... We sort of seen grow across uh, the last couple of months, and no real surprises there. The, the other questions, though, of course, Paradigm Shift and the Kraken Esports Club, um, pretty firmly five and six in my mind. Mm. Um, but again, what does that look like for playoffs? And uh, tonight we're going to see where the rest of the teams come through as they earn points, their last opportunity to do so. So let's go and take a look. And our bracket as it sits after this week's play. And I take a look there. I'm going to pretend the right-hand side uh, doesn't exist for the moment. And just work from the left across. Uh, Atletico uh, losing to Ming Young. Paradigm Shift a 3-0 over Power Anchors. Uh, Scrim Bucks uh, 3 and 0. And for me, Jordan, I'm going to say the standout of the first round. ADSL 2 plus 3-2. Uh, looks like a closely fought victory 
over the Kraken Esports Club. Yeah, definitely a bit of a surprise to me as well, Ben. I mean, Kraken Esports is a team that in the last couple of weeks of trials and even in last week of contenders, we sort of saw doing relatively well. So I'm not really sure what's going on there. That's a, a very surprising result for me. Obviously, we don't get to see those matches on broadcast, but for ADSL 2 Plus, definitely, uh, you know, probably one of their better performances. I, I haven't been paying too much attention, if I'm being honest, to ADSL 2 Plus because mm. we've not really ever seen them go deep in trials or, or make it really too far in contenders either. But to be able to see them get the, the win over Kraken, I think certainly speaks for, for something and maybe does give them those little bit of extra points that they need to, you know, maybe have a shot at making it into playoffs. And that'll certainly a, be a discussion that has to end up being had. We do have a few replays here for, for Kraken and ADSL 2 Plus. And, you know, I was thinking, okay, maybe Kraken had uh, a roster change up or something like that that might have been what caused the, the problems for them in this matchup. But it does look like they've actually come in with that core roster. So I'm not honestly too sure how they've actually ended up losing this game because I would have thought every day of the week this was one that they would have won. But for ADSL 2 Plus, definitely a good result. Yeah, certainly, certainly is. Uh, you can see from our our replays from uh, the week's play, ADSL 2 Plus obviously picking up uh, control. Um, and that's, you know, something we always talk about how, you know, uh, sometimes that, that control map can go either way. Um, as we come across here now to Eichenwald, and it looked like uh, Kraken um, seemed to have the better of the Malone Pills with a, with a big play we saw just a little bit early as well. So they came out of that one uh, one and one. Uh, which, you know, based on the play that we saw, should have been uh, uh, pretty self-explanatory. Nice little uh, Sigma ult coming through here. The Gravitic Flux. Yeah, you love that one, don't you? Yeah, not bad at all. Like, there is some, some, some good plays as part of this, uh, but uh, ADSL 2 Plus picking up the second map. That would mean uh, that Vol Sky must... This must be Kraken picking this one up if we went all the way through to 5, Jordan. I guess assuming the maps are in order. Yeah. But... What I do find interesting, Ben, uh, just from what I've been having a quick look at mm. here, is that there isn't actually much Echo being played, or in fact no. any Echo at all. So Echo is actually available in this week's current hero rotation. Ash and Reaper are the DPS that teams aren't allowed to play. So the fact that we're not seeing too much Echo, I think obviously then would speak volumes for the strength of the, the May-Cree combo, right? Every single week we've seen McCree available. He has essentially been the DPS that you pick in almost every single situation, and that seems to, to sort of transcend what we saw last week, even from Echo. Yeah, that's uh, that's a it's a pretty interesting note for sure, and uh, I guess the the only other takeaway there is that in that match, Kraken dropped both control map types as well. So uh, look, uh, control is pretty important, and it's very easy to to let that one slip away. Uh, the other one from the the first round, Paradigm Shift over uh, power anchors now three and zero to be fair paradigm shift week in week out uh, definitely seem to be that you know that five six team I think uh, you might even suggest that they are team number five firmly over over Kraken and certainly after tonight's uh, or this week's results Jordan where we see uh, Kraken not even making their way through oh look at this look at this, yeah, this is this good. the new hole in one well, it's weird, isn't it, right? Because we very rarely see Sigma and D.Va in the same kind of a team competition. It is in peculiar, fact, isn't we, it? We don't see it at all. And in this instance, it's actually the Echo, I believe, for, for Spectra using the Sigma Ultimate, the Gravitic Flux that's kind of been taken away from uh, ah. their opponent. So, you know, you, you still don't get that combo. But in a way, we've got that combo. That's, and that's something that sort of Echo opens that's cool, up. That's cool, right? Because we've kind of missed it since Goats have disappeared. You're probably not going to play... Zarya Diva as yep. your two tanks, right? So, uh, uh, you know, the hole in one combo, as I certainly like to talk about it, uh, it's kind of been lacking. In, look, look at Spectre here. Look at this. Oh, great, uh, great observing, too. Uh, but some, <laughs> some clearly some good uh, Hanzo, Hanzo plays coming out. Um, and uh, Power Anchors coming out on uh, top. Uh, I, I suspect that. Uh, there we go. Yeah, that's the, that's the right. The right look, the right feel for those results. Um, uh, you know, it's going to be tough. Um, for uh, we'll see where Power Anchors, I guess, sit in the in the scheme of top eight. Yep. I'm not sure where they're sitting right now. I'll have to uh, regroup and take a look at that a bit later. But um, I think no real surprises there to see that Paradigm Shift team make it through at least the first round, right? So. Yep. I agree. Uh, I mean, going up against Warriors for, for Paradigm Shift, obviously going to be a tough game there in mm. the quarterfinal. But for Paradigm Shift, you know, it's just another good 
sort of solid result in contenders, which should put them in a, in a decent spot to make it through to uh, the, the playoffs. And I'd say they managed to do that fairly comfortably. Obviously, come playoffs is going to be a bit more of a different task for them as we take a look at now some of the games between Warriors and Paradigm Shift, who, yeah. you know, obviously did end up struggling in this one. Uh, I think it's been a nice resurgence of late for Warriors in particular. Uh, they did definitely start off this season looking a little bit weaker than we probably had hoped. Triple kill with a pulse bomb from Spectra there. It's pretty oh, that's nice. That's nice. That's actually... How does how does that even play out? And if you'll note in this clip, uh, there's a death to a tracer that is kind of around the corner. Uh, Cindy was having a bit of a giggle at that one when we were looking at the replay earlier on. He wasn't too sure how the, the how Sozip actually died to that one. But either way... Great to see a lot of uh, Sigma alts coming through in these highlights as well. But uh, yeah, Paradigm Shift uh, up against the Warriors. And we, we, I guess we kind of talked about the Warriors coming through. You know, we really thought that they'd sort of found their form and did deserve that that sort of fourth place as, as well. So um, yeah, we'll be seeing them uh, tonight, of course, competing uh, in the top um, uh, top games in the semi-final. The yep. yep. It'll be uh, an interesting one for Warriors. That's actually the first time that we're going to see Grand Zero play a team other than Mindfreak. I suppose that's a discussion that we do want to get into a little bit later on, but mm. definitely uh, a big game for Warriors, you know, because, again, they're one of these teams that, that sort of deserve to be in the top four that hasn't quite managed to get as many points as the others by virtue of the fact that they've struggled in the, the first couple of weeks to contend it. So it's good to see them back. Certainly is. And then our last match that we're going to take a look through from this week's play before we do start uh, chatting a little bit more about tonight's matches, Mind Freak G up against ADSL 2 Plus. Now, uh, look, I still have questions over that Kraken game. Uh, did ADSL 2 Plus play out of, did they play like a fiver to the premises NBN Jordan and not ADSL 2 Plus? I'm not sure. Or did a Kraken Esports Club uh, not perform to their full potential? Oh dear. Yeah, maybe so, but even regardless of whether ADSL 2 Plus overperformed or not in that match against Kraken, they would have had to have come into this game against Mindfreak G and had, you know, an astronomical overperformance to even probably yes. put a map on the board, yeah. such as the sort of caliber of the team that Mindfreak G has been able to put together here. And, you know, i got to say, I think Mindfreak's been a little bit hard done by this season, going up against Grand Zero three weeks in a row. That is now a shackle that's been sort of loosed from them as they do go up against Sydney Drop Bears in the semi-final today. So I, th I think that's going to be a, a big one for Mind Freak to sort of show us that they're not necessarily deserving of potentially that third or fourth place. Maybe they are deserving of the second place, at least behind ground zero discussion. That was a nice play from Bus, by the way, spinning around uh, with the Wrecking Ball, knocking all of ADSL 2 Plus off of oh, the car. Look at that double, double kill, double headshot with the Icicle on the maze. So uh, that's, that's a nice little one indeed. And yeah, you, you're entirely right. Um, I think it was probably a, a bridge too far here for ADSL 2 Plus to come and expect uh, necessarily to pick up Mind Freak G. But I would say, you know, again, since we don't get to see these guys this week, apart from uh, obviously this replay, uh, congrats for making it through to the, that round of playoffs this week, Jordan, because that's a that's a pretty big accomplishment even of itself, and uh, particularly up against a, a team like Kraken, uh, that that's definitely a, a pretty tough round, and to uh, to be able to pick them up three and two, that's a you know a, a well fought victory. So uh, some good results for ADSL Two Plus this week. Yeah, I have to agree, and hopefully we'll get to see a bit of ADSL Two Plus in uh, I suppose the next couple of weeks if they do manage to to make it into those playoffs and. I'd say that's be a pretty respectable result from this squad who, just having a look at the names there, I don't think I've seen in Overwatch Contenders before. Mm. Um, you know, if you make it to playoffs in your first season of Contenders, that's something that we've always looked to to be a good result. And that brings us, Jordan, to tonight's matches. Ground Zero Gaming up against the Warriors is going to be our first match of the night. And then the Sydney Drop Bears up against Mind Freak G. Now, as you alluded to, uh, Mind Freak finally not having to take on the best team in the region. It has been uh, pretty tough for them, I think, going time and time again up against the number one. It's hard to know whether are you are you third, fourth, or perhaps are you second. You know what I mean? It, yep. it's, it's, it, it can be uh, a little bit difficult. So tonight's their opportunity. 
They've had all season long to warm up for this moment. Uh, no excuses. Let's see whether they can take on ground zero in the finals for a change. Yeah, I mean, we did see a bit of a better result yesterday, uh, yesterday, last week from Mind Freak. Uh, mm. When they did go up against ground zero, they were able to, to take one map away from them, at least, as opposed to the first couple of weeks where they were just dead set 3 zeros. So, seems to be sort of slowly progressing along nicely for Mind Freak, even after the roster change, having Swilko depart, I thought was a pretty big loss for them. But, you know, they're going along nicely, and I guess, yeah, you, you're exactly right. Tonight is the night for them where they have to kind of prove that they do deserve to be in that ground final. Yeah, talking about a player who potentially, Elfish Guy, might find themselves in the grand final of the season. Our player spotlight tonight, let's take a look at Signed from Ground Zero. Now, Signed has had a pretty good season and uh, it's hard not to when your team's doing so well, Jordan. Yeah, definitely. I mean, Signed has been one of the players throughout uh, pretty much all of Overwatch contenders here in Australia that we've spoken a lot about, and he is an incredibly strong hit scan DPS player. It's no surprise to see him in the best roster in the competition and to be having such a solid performance in the competition as well. You know, it's not just the, the Tracer, it's not just the McCree. Yeah. Um, you know, Widowmaker is something that he can pull out here and there. Uh, any number of heroes, I'm sure you could just chuck him on and he'd probably be able to get a, a large degree of value out of them and probably more than most DPS players here in Overwatch Contenders Australia. So, you know, definitely a big asset to, to this Ground Zero roster. And, uh, yeah. He's been obviously having a great season, as we've seen in, in many previous seasons as well. It's been great to be able to unleash the DPS as well, right? Particularly for me, when I think back to what I used to cast and the, the number of GOATS games that I saw, to be able to see Tracer back out here, McCree back out here, you know, Echo, uh, all those things that we've seen recently as well. It's uh, back to the time of the DPS, and Sign certainly um, has shown us this season uh, some... Some pretty impressive play, and as you alluded to, across a number of heroes. Yeah, definitely. Uh, and to be honest, I think it's just one small part, piece of the puzzle, right? This is obviously Science Spotlight, but yeah. the rest of Ground Zero, a good team behind him, and that always helps out as well. well that's it. It, it. I feel like uh, quite often you, your DPS players are sort of limited by what the rest of the team is doing. If you're not getting heals, mm -hmm. you know, then uh, it's going to be Struggle Street. You only got 200 HP and, and whatnot. So uh, certainly. Uh, Overwatch, a team game, but uh, some great plays there from Signed, and we'll see how they go tonight. But uh, let's go and take a look at uh, what we were talking about earlier, Elfish Guy, our, our heroes that are out of rotation for this week. Ash, we saw a lot of actually really great play last week from Ash. I think that was off the back of McCree not being in last week's hero pool. Yep. Uh, Reaper, the other DPS out. And then Reinhardt and Brigitte as your tank and support look to be fair. If Reinhardt's not there, why does Brigitte need to be there anyway? Because, you know, she's uh, she's there to help. Uh, JK. But the point is, what do you, what do you think of this as a, a bit of a, a mix for me? No Reaper as well. What are we going to see in, in the way of tanks there? Does that change things yeah. up? Uh, and as we saw earlier with, with the May and the McCree, maybe that's uh, a, a bit of a taste of things to come. Yeah, definitely. I, I certainly think we're going to be seeing a lot of McCree today. Uh, the lack of Reinhardt is probably going to lend us a little bit more to so, some more dive-oriented compositions mm -hmm. as well. So there'll be sort of two schools of thought again with the, the Tracer Sombra kind of a setup as your DPS line, maybe followed up by a Winston and the Diva. Uh, otherwise, you, you'd be looking towards a, a McCree to sort of deal with that and um, you, may, you may be able to go back onto something like a Arisa Sigma in that instance. Um, the fact that Ash is gone, I don't think is a big deal, uh, given most of what she was used for last week was kind of in, re in relation to what Echo was was able to do. Mm. Uh, Reaper might have a bit of a bigger impact because we have at times seen the, the Reaper in some of those closer engagements yeah. uh, in conjunction with something like the, the May, and that's tended to work out pretty okay. The same for Brigitte, but by and large, I think the, the biggest hero out of rotation here definitely going to be the, the Reinhardt, and I think that's going to kind of influence a lot of the, the team compositions as we head into this final week of Overwatch Contenders Australia. Yeah, it's certainly... I suspect we'll indeed change things up for tonight. But our first semi-final of our last regular week, Ground Zero Gaming, the team on top of our leaderboard, undefeated week in, week out, up against the Warriors, a team who perhaps struggled through the start of the season, Jordan, but certainly have seemed to find their legs when it counts. Uh, we haven't seen these two teams go head-to-head, -head, I believe, 
all season long. And I think you were alluding to earlier as well, the fact that Ground Zero consistently ends up against Mind Freak in the semi. So now I think this is a good little way to end the regular season story uh, for both Ground Zero and for the Warriors because we've seen the journey of the Warriors. I think right? it's going to be a good way to end the season for Ground Zero. I'm not sure it's going to be a the good way story, to end the season Elfish for Warriors. I want to see where the Warriors stack up. Yeah, I do. I do as well. Uh, although I've got to say, I'm not too hopeful here. And look, it's it's not a slight have, against Warriors, have some, right? Have some hope. It's not. I wouldn't be saying. I'm not just saying this because it's Warriors. I would be saying this regardless of who it is yeah. that's going up against Ground Zero. I do just think they're that far ahead of, of everyone okay. else. So, look, if Warriors is going to be able to get one map here, I'll say that's a good performance. Well, that's I would I would suggest that's probably a pretty good performance as well. But, of course, it will depend on the maps that we will be playing. Let's go and take a look. Basan into King's Row, into Dorado, into Hanamura, and into Ilios as our fifth map should be. We require it. Uh, I don't know. I always think King's Row is a pretty even map. I actually do quite enjoy it, and I find sometimes we get uh, some some very close matches. Perhaps uh, an opportunity for the Warriors there. We'll, we'll wait and see. And I, I think that you're, you know, we, if you suggest that the Warriors coming out with a map is good, I, I don't disagree. And that's part of the story that I think we can tell here potentially for them. If they can come out and they can take it to a team like yeah. Ground Zero, and take maps off them. I'm not saying that they can't win. I'm just saying that, well, no one's beating Ground Zero at the moment, right? Yeah, look, no one's beating Ground Zero. Sydney Drop Bears and Mind Freak are the teams that have come closest to that. And as far as Warriors is concerned, so far this season, they haven't actually been able to get over the line against either Sydney Drop Bears or, or Mind Freak. So to assume that they're going to be able to do so against Ground Zero today, I think is a little bit far-fetched, but you know what? We've we've seen them improving over the course of the season, and maybe this is the week where Warriors is able to peak, and maybe Ground Zero has a bit of a sleepy one because they're basically assured first place in playoffs regardless. We'll see. Um, I have to say, though, I think Ground Zero definitely should be... To be honest, I think they should be 3 0 in this, just to continue to prove that point. I, I look, I don't disagree, Elfish Guy, but the Warriors are in it. And uh, it would be a great run through to playoffs for them if they could pick up a victory against the undefeated Ground Zero right now. But we are going to kick this off on Busan. Double shields for both teams as well. The different selfish guy is so zip on the McCree. And Sign, for some reason, crazily out here on uh, a Torbjorn, which is very exciting. Yeah, it doesn't seem to be working too kindly here for Ground Zero at the moment. The McCree, definitely one of the, the premium DPS picks for this season. And uh, it's going to town right now for Warriors. That damage coming through has been finished off by Quartz and Noz for the first couple of frags that we've seen there. And now Scyand is going to fall as well. So Warriors actually end up steamrolling Ground Zero a little bit in that fight. Yeah, well, are we going to see any changes coming out from Ground Zero right now? That's doesn't look uh, like it. No, it certainly doesn't look like it. Maybe uh, hoping that they'll pick up. One big difference, though, is that look at Adam's ultimate charge. 95% yeah, compared to Noz. So I don't know where that's come from, but he's done a lot of damage in that fight and could actually be the turning point for this one. I'm not sure that Warriors will expect a Gravitic Flux this early on in the piece as he's going to let loose on a few of them. He's going to try. He certainly does pick them up. I'm not sure if it's going to have the result. He was maybe chasing the creep, but Sozip will stay alive. You can see the stun going on to Signed as well. And that Torbjorn is picked up. Deadeye coming out from Sozip also. And another fight win should go across to the Warriors. You can see Ground Zero trying to get onto the objective, but really they've got very little to work with. Yeah, nice positioning from Warriors in that fight, and it made it pretty tough for Adam to get a good Gravitic Flux out there. The value for him, not necessarily realized. He picks everyone up, but they're all behind cover, and once they come back down on the ground, you know, they're all next to each other. Cover and Quartz obviously being on the Orisa, you can see a bit of shielding coming down from them, and then uh, I guess for, for Ground Zero, very difficult for them to finish off even that low HP McCree. Blizzard out here from August, and Warriors are trying to start the fight on the right foot. Yeah, double Blizzard, but beat from Kura will give the edge to the Warriors, and once again, Sign goes down to Sozip, less than ideal. It really seems like Warriors are taking this battle to Ground Zero, and they're not really afraid of them at all either. No. Warriors being the ones to start these fights, they have the advantages, they know that they have the advantages, and 
They actually look like they're going to walk into a victory here on Mecha Base. Yeah, feels like there's very little the Ground Zero have in their favor, short of Bertlog dropping the beat, and they'll engage with that one, but Noz will come through. Uh, don't know if we managed to grab anyone, but they lose players anyway. It doesn't matter. The Warriors have only lost one. Ground Zero only have two remaining in this point. The first objective will go across to the Warriors. They'll be 1-0 up for them on Bissan. Great start for them. Precisely what they're looking for. Yeah, and very underwhelming, I have to say, from Ground Zero. I don't even know if we got many of the ultimate rotations out from them. A few, I think, didn't even manage to get a single ultimate out. But end of the day, it is just one round here on uh, Control. So it's you know still something that we can see pulled back here by Ground Zero. I do wonder if they're going to go for, you know, like opting for a different strategy or something like that, different composition at the very least to kind of change things up and keep it fresh because that was fairly uninspired. Mm. Yeah, it was great. Signed, uh, thankfully not going to be playing the Torbjorn by the looks of things. But, uh, as we saw, I think, in our spotlight as well, it was Tracer where Signed certainly seemed to excel. That's what he'll be back on now as we kick off round number two. Surely control won't be a 2-0 across to the Warriors to start off this semi-final. What a what a crazy way to begin that would be. And we do have a tracer on the other side of the field for Warriors. It's so zip that he'll try and deal with Science antics, but he kind of also has to be aware of CKM as well. It's the fair bit here for so zip to kind of keep an eye on. Yeah. Weird to see the Torbjorn on the other side of things, but with Kaffa going down, uh, this could be a first fight win once again, going across uh, to the Warriors, Jordan. So, uh, look, great start from them, what they're looking for. That was definitely a less than ideal fight. Uh, Kaffa getting picked off. Not sure if he was out of position or why that played out the way it did, but the result is the same. August is going to be able to get himself a turret back on up, and this is where the nut will become a little difficult to crack for Ground Zero. This kind of bunker setup, Torbjorn, the turret, kind of annoying, particularly for these low HP players like Sign and CKM, who like to be getting around on the flanks, like to be unspotted, but as soon as you come out of stealth, you'll be in trouble. Oh, Pulse here we go. Through. Great work on to Terry, who was halfway through a coalescent. Drake used a coalescence of his own. The fight did go, at least on the objective, to Ground Zero Gaming. The battle surely going to go to the Warriors. They will capture this back, and Ground Zero will find themselves once again in a very difficult position, Elfish Guy. Yeah, definitely taking a while for Ground Zero again to build those ultimate charges up. It's now two fights, and the only one that's really had an ult is Terry with the Coalescence, which is one of the fastest charging ults in the game. And yep. Sion has now come online with the Pulse Bomb. Same for Kuffa with the, the Primal Rage. But I wonder if it's just a little bit too little too late here because Warriors are already up to 60% and Ground Zero just not really finding any inroads into any of these engagements. They're not starting with the, the opening pick. They're not being able to find any flanks or do any real significant damage early in the round. And look at that, going to have to translocate out of the fight. Didn't get to use the EMP. Kuffa has used the Primal Rage to try and get Ground Zero back into it. Sozip has gone down this time. Terry managing to bring one back. You can see August has used his ultimate as well. Signed ready for a Pulse Bomb, looking for the pick. Ground Zero will win this fight and capture back the objective. And they will do so only using Kuffa and that Primal Rage. If they were going to win a fight, that was the best way to win it. Maybe they've got a shot. Certainly, and you can never really count a team like Ground Zero out of it. That said, it was a conscious decision from Warriors to hang on to the majority of their ults. Only August threw his out in that fight, so we do end up actually going into this with essentially a 5-on-5 five five as far yeah. as the ultimates are concerned. Now, you tell me what you think is going to be a little oh, more no. here. Oh, no! Bertlog has gone down. The beat was not dropped. We'll see which team comes out on top. EMP. And that's a huge EMP. Kura dropped the beat. The EMP deleted the shields, and this could be a turning point. Having said that, Ground Zero have lost a number of players. The Warriors on the point, and they brought it back. Bertlog will have the beat to drop, but the Warriors will have two ultimates to work with. This could be too much. 
The Gravitic Flux comes through. Adam goes down. The Wrecking Ball disintegrated. Coalescence from Drake on the point, hosing them down, as Mitch would say. And to be honest, the Warriors really have hose ground zero out of this match here on Busan. I can't believe we're going to go into this one. One nil up for the Warriors. Surely it's not going to happen. Oh, I don't but it think, must. I don't think they're going to be able to salvage this one, Ground Zero. I just don't know where this has come from at all. Warriors are looking fantastic at the moment. So Zip, he's going to chuck a pulse bomb out. That was a little bit willy-nilly, a little bit of happy-go-lucky. Oh. He doesn't get too much done with it. Terry's fallen, though, to his counterpart, Drake. And the pulse bomb this time again, not connecting. And really, for Warriors, it's just a case of dealing with these stragglers. They are going to win this round. It's just a case of when, when, not if. When not if indeed, Adam back onto the point. The Primal Rage came out. Quats drops the bongos and Drake back out with another coalescence. 2-0 to the Warriors on Basan. What a great start for them in this semi-final. Our last week of regular season play. And they're 1-0 up against the team that has won each and every week. I don't know really what to tell you, to be honest, Ben. That just didn't seem like ground zero at all. Normally, you see them in these kinds of engagements and they're not even going close. They're just yeah. completely wiping the floor with their opponents. Maybe they've just got a little bit lax. They've got a little bit too relaxed in the last few weeks facing against a team called Mind Freak that they must now be pretty comfortable versing. That suddenly when someone else comes along called Warriors, Jeez. it's... But they, in the world. they still win the final, right? It's one thing to beat Mind Freak in the semis, but then you still go up against someone like the Drop Bears in the final, and yep. then you still win. So, look, I don't know if the fact that they never found ground on Mecha Base put them on a, a little bit of tilt, you know? They came through, they used the tall, but I didn't mean. work, and it felt like Sign was kind of getting... Uh, owned uh, by the pistol there by Sozip, and I guess it is kind of, it's an uneven matchup, I, I guess, but then August comes out with a torp of his own, uh, pretty similar team comps, um, but yeah, look, nevertheless, I don't think this is really the kind of team to, to tilt. You know, you got some pretty positive personalities on that roster, CKM and Adam. Mm. I mean, look, I've never obviously played in a team environment or competitive environment with either of those two guys, but just from my interactions with them as individuals when we've sort of been at land events and that kind of thing, it's kind of hard to imagine those guys kind of tilting. Mm. I think that's just a loss that Ground Zero is going to look at and go, okay, we screwed up, we messed up, we didn't manage to sort of do too much there um, on Busan and we started off both of those rounds with uh, a pretty bad engagement, which has sort of snowballed, and Warriors have picked up the victory. All right, fine. Yeah. Let's slow things down and let's reset yeah. here going into to Kings Row. I'm not too concerned at the moment for Ground Zero, and that's the kind of thing that, you know, the pedigree of this roster and their results kind of affords them, right? Normally, if you're down 1 and 0 against Ground Zero, you're kind of in the bin as far as I'm concerned. But when yeah. Ground Zero is down 0 and 1, you still think, look, there's a very good chance they come back into these things. You give them that benefit of the, the doubt. The thing for me, though, is that a lot of the times we've, te we've seen a team like Ground Zero go down on the first fight, maybe in the second fight on control, but they almost always manage to sort of even it up, bring it back, steady the flow, turn the tide, whatever you want to say. Hmm. And they often do come back out on top by the end of the control. It never looked it didn't. like Ground Zero was about to steady that. It never looked like they were going to find themselves the advantage that would turn the tide. Um, so feels like maybe the, if the Warriors can get ahead, uh, it's difficult to take that momentum back off them. We'll see how that plays out now as we head into King's Row. The Warriors are going to be starting off on attack. Ground zero on defense. If the Warriors can come out, grab the first objective nice and quick. Jordan, uh, I feel like maybe they can build upon this momentum and make something of this. Imagine if we go into halftime with the Warriors 2-0 up against uh, Ground Zero Gaming. What a world. I would be pretty astonished, okay? So that's where I'll start to think, okay, you know what? Warriors are here to party, right? Uh, yeah. one, one map, it's good, but it's not enough for me to really get excited just yet. Warriors, though, if they are able to pick up King's Row, then either we're in for a quick night because they're going to 3-0 zero Ground Zero, or we're still going to be sitting here going, you know what? I think Ground Zero might come back into things and we might finally get a five mapper here in Overwatch Contenders Australia for this season. Once again, Sion going to be playing Torbjorn. Other than that, the team's looking identical. We'll see whether Sozip 
can get the better in, but Sign gets the better of Kura. Nice aggressive play coming out from Torp. Nice little pick. A little bit more like it, just spamming away. I think with yeah. that left click has managed to connect the final blow. Warriors is not going to cost them too much time. They'll be able to reset pretty quickly here. If uh, if Ground Zero lose to the Warriors tonight, can I give you a sick fade like mine? No. Wow. I'm not willing to take that bet at all. Double shield come up, of course, for both sides. It is the Orisa Sigma combo, and now the double walls there as well. Kuffer's flashed out for a moment, but oh, the double look at start. Look Watson Nas. Cold lessons from Drake Jordan will save the day just in the very nick of time. Signed has lost his turret, and that is going to be the breaking point. Warriors are just going to run over ground zero again. It's the coalescence that comes up first for Drake. And with that little bit of extra push, that little bit of extra oomph, the damage and yeah. the healing, that's what wa allows Warriors to go on the offensive and knock over ground zero there on point A. They've got five minutes heading into phase B. Gosh, I love Warriors sometimes. So good. So good as a support. And that was it. Quats and Nose were dead. They were going down, and it was only that coalescence that kept them alive, and then not only kept them alive, but turned the tide of that particular fight. And now, as you alluded to, 4.45 here on the clock, and the Warriors pushed a long way forward. We'll see how far they got with the payload, but this is a pretty messy fight. August and CKM both throwing out ulties. Noz is eating CKMs. That's a pretty big play, just like Diva, except better. Oh, so zip! Filthy! Round through the bookstore, big plays, and the Warriors win the first fight of the payload phase here of this map, putting themselves in an absolutely great spot. It wasn't without some degree of investment from Ground Zero as well, so, you know, Warriors haven't been easily able to roll over ground zero so far but they are certainly making a pretty good time in here and they're doing it relatively economically as well you know Kura and August are the only ones that don't have an ultimate available in this fight so zip they're gonna try and combine it with gravitic flux but they are all in the end ground zero safe from the dead eye Adam gonna go down to Nas as well look at this that's insane Burtlogs dropped the beat but it's not going to matter. The team one by one is going down. Sign drops his ultimate. I can only assume that he's going to change hero after that. And the Warrior is coming through with very quick I efficiency. I don't know what I'm watching, Ben. This is I just completely unexpected. Yeah. Everything about this matchup would have said Ground Zero should just steamroll Warriors. But Warriors are coming out with the goods tonight. And they're taking that fight to Ground Zero and they're making it look really easy. Who's been in a little bit of trouble, does survive for now. He gets helped out by those healers. August, good freeze on a large majority of those Ground what? Zero players. And again, it's just a clean wipe. What is going on? This is insane. Have we swapped the team names around? Is everyone on the Warriors now playing on Ground Zero and everyone on Ground Zero now playing the Warriors? I don't even know. This is It's one thing to be winning. It's another to be doing so so simply, so zip on the high ground with the dead eye drops down, finds Adam as well. That is one tank gone. It's going to be particularly tough now for Ground Zero to hold this back. Drake has used the coalescence. So zip getting aggressive, trying to find the second tank. CKM down, Kaffa down successfully. They're going to start one by one, coming back onto the point, but it will not matter. The Warriors should come through with three and a half minutes wow. on the clock. What an incredible attacking side here. I mean, that is, a, Row. that is a huge statement from Warriors, you know, not only to be able to do it on Busan, but now to back it up as well. It's not a fluke. Warriors is here to play today, and three and a half minutes to play with on the defense, at least as far as their... Uh, advantage is concerned. I don't see Ground Zero beating that and the form that Warriors are in tonight, I don't even see Ground Zero really finishing this map off. I don't Crazy. Know. It's madness. I don't even know, Jordan. But yet here we are. What a world. Are we have we stepped into an alternate universe? We might have. This is the same I don't know if, week, if right? MC and Cindy are trying to tell us something. But <laughs> I'm not gonna touch on that too hard. I just I just want to highlight it.
Oh man, do you know that that text to speech, the old uh, Microsoft Sam? The test results are in. Let's print them out. I don't know that. Okay. That must be some sort of, sort of movement meme or something. Yep, the warriors are on fire. You like that one? I've no idea what that even was. I wonder if I could do text to speech. It wouldn't really work like, it wouldn't be very convenient, right, if you had to just sit there and do it and wait for someone to send you a text to speech. This is what happens when you put two casters together that are nine years apart. You know, there's this intergenerational gap in memes that you just You're can't understand. You're not that old, are you? You're 40-something. Jeez Louise, who even knew? Not me. Anyway, can't keep up with the kids these days. Ground Zero, they're gonna they're not keeping up with the kids right now. They're not keeping up with the Warriors. Let's see. Ground Zero are the kids. Adam and Signed are the kids. Not anymore. They're aging out, Elfish. That's Mike. true. Come on. Ground Zero. You can do it, guys. Bring this well, one back. There Joseph. we go. He's been out to dry and That's Ground the Zero. Fight. I mean, Ground Zero have changed up their composition. Finally, they're on to the monkey, they're onto the dive, and that's looked so much better for them. Okay, let's not get too far ahead of ourselves just yet. There we go. Alright. Returning to uh, some sense of normality for now. Maybe we're just gonna get to see Kings Row over and over. Three and a half minutes if we get back to the start. For the Warriors. That's quite a lot. Yeah, you really would actually be able to see, you know, probably two or three iterations of King's Row if both teams end up finishing it with that oh, amount of time. Kaffa gets nice and aggressive and a lot of them together between him. Kura, CKM. Uh, yeah, that's uh, it's going to be less than ideal for the oh! support. Burtlog! Holy moly! I mean, that's the dream really for a Winston. You're sitting in a close range angle. All your opponents are stuck right in front of you. Your Tesla cannon is cleaving. And then Bertlock comes in with the finish, the right click. He hits that button, gets a double kill. You love to see it. Sure, Ground Zero love to see it here as well. Warriors have to adapt. They have to change things up a little bit. They've gone into the Torbjorn. Try and deal with uh, this dive composition a little bit better. I can understand the Torbjorn because it works so well for Ground Zero. Well, Warriors were able to make it work in the second round of Busan. They did. It's true. Let's see if they can make it work now here on defense on King's Row. CKM about to have that EMP available, and I think that's what they're working for. Takes a lot of damage, throws it one. out, hits quads. I'm not sure if that was the target we were looking for. The Warriors off the back of that do manage to stand here with a bit of a defense, Drake and that Coalescence and Sozip. We were just suggesting that maybe the Torbjorn wouldn't work, but he's really showing us. Yeah, he gets the turret up on the high ground, behind ground zero, drops down behind him, and it's just holding down that right-click button. And look at the stagger here onto Adam. He is not going to be a happy chappy at all. That's a huge stagger. It's, you know, 10 or 15 seconds. Doesn't sound like much, but... In the grand scheme of things, when you're chasing down a three and a half minute time deficit potentially, you, yeah. you need every second that you can get. And that's a master stroke of a change from Sozip. 3k in that last fight already makes a massive difference and they've potentially even caught cover here if he gets frozen on up. Has to use Primal Rage to get out of there okay. Self-destruct is thrown in as well. So far, no picks. No, and the, the beat from Kura was the deciding factor to keep at least uh, Kura alive from the self-destruct. Noz seems maybe to have turned it around. Ground Zero have thrown a number of ultimates into this fight. And they're not really getting all that far through the DMAC as well. They're on to Adam. The Warriors are uh, going to push two fight wins together in a row. And that's really going to allow them to, to, to find a good spot here to defend the payload. It's moving backwards now. And Ground Zero are just starting to run out of time. They need to... Uh, Get it going. They've made some changes also, so it could take them a while until the next round of ultimates. CKM's back on the trusty Farah. Don't know if yeah, this is going to work here. out, but against the Torbjorn should be relatively straightforward in dealing with the turrets for someone like CKM, who is a very accomplished Farah player. 
Gonna it's try. actually the Mercy under pressure. Yeah, well, that's what happens, right? When you use the coalescence, it was firstly maybe I can find CKM. Never mind. I'll just take down Burtlog. That Mercy is a nice, simple target. And eventually, uh, without the support of Burtlog, CKM goes down also. The payload continues, Jordan. It's going in reverse. This is the wrong direction. <laughs> Yeah, it's definitely the wrong direction for Ground Zero as well when you consider they've won the last few weeks of Overwatch Contenders Australia. 3-1 against Mind Freak, 3-0 against Mind Freak, you know, no problem. Same exact kind of a scoreline against Sydney Drop Bears, oh. and yet here's Warriors who's probably going to go up 2-0 against Ground Zero and be the first team to find a couple of maps against them in a series. It's unbelievable to me right now, but Warriors are actually doing this. They're doing it... I, I don't know how, I don't know what's changed, but they seem to have their number, that's for sure. CKM does throw out the barrage, not much comes for it. Drake once more has that coalescence, which can prove very difficult for the aerial targets. Adam D. Mech, and right now for Ground Zero Gaming, they are running out of time, 60 seconds on the clock, and the only thing going in their favor is, um, well, nothing. Nothing, yeah, I was gonna say, there's nothing. There's nothing going in the favor of Ground Zero right now, and this is a never-ending fight. Warriors have just, like, had two or three respawns in the entire time that Ground Zero hasn't really been able to push the cart. Finally, now they start to back away and reset for but a moment. They're waiting for those respawners. I'm sure they want to contest once more before we get into point B as, well, so Zip decides to chuck everything onto the cart, and that does push Ground Zero away. So a moment's respite for Warriors. 30 seconds left on the clock for Ground Zero. All right, Seacam looking for a big barrage. You can see that Terry has managed to find the turret. That's a start, but Drake's got the coalescence again. He pushes them back. Seacam so low, and he's going to go down to North. He found Sozip, but I'm not sure if that's going to be enough. Ground Zero trying to push through. They have four heroes alive. The Warriors. Going to be streaming back now onto the payload. You can see Sozip swapping across as well onto the Doom Fist. Oh my god, Noz got the, the remake after all that time running around as Baby oh Diva. Man. I was watching and waiting and trying to see whether or not he'd and go now, down. The self destruct as well, the beat from oh. Hura! Oh. And Noz surely seals the deal. We are going into half time. The Warriors 2 0 up against the team sitting. On top of the leaderboard, the Warriors were struggling to get into the top four. And right now, they are one map away going through to tonight's finals and being the first team to take down Ground Zero Gaming. Jordan, we talked about coming into playoffs on a roll and would not, this would be pretty impressive sight. It certainly would. This oh. is now time to start getting a bit excited. Ground zero down zero and two. I have never, ever, ever seen anything like that this season of Overwatch Contenders. It's been, actually, to be fair, a pretty run-of-the-mill season yeah. with most of the results. Never the, in my life of the whole season yeah. have I seen something like this. I know. It's crazy. Incredible. I've not really thought that we would get to see this. I just kind of thought Ground Zero was going to run away with the entire season, but certainly credit to Warriors. I mean, they did make a couple of changes, uh, I think a couple of weeks ago, um, bringing in August, and I think it was bringing in Drake as well, and they've really meshed well, and they've brought the, the roster together, and they've looked actually better than really probably any of the Warriors uh, rosters have actually in the past, to be quite frank. So this is something pretty special, I think, that Warriors are putting together tonight. And the thing for me is going to be, you know, can they actually manage to, to pull this off? Because uh, the, the, the way that I look at matches like this, when it's a, it's a massive favorite against a bit of an underdog, and even if the quote-unquote underdog is still a good team, which I consider Warriors to be, there's always that caveat that it's not over until it's over, right? This and is it, not done and it, yet. It's still not, obviously, over until it's over. But when at the start of tonight's broadcast, we are like, wow, you know... I think a good result would be the Warriors getting a map, right? They're the only team in this season so far to have taken two maps off of, off of Ground Zero. And they might well be the first one to beat Ooh. them. I don't... Look, look, without getting too excited, okay, without getting too excited, the okay. Warriors have, sorry, Ground Zero have locked themselves, we know, the top spot, That's right? true. For the season. Mm. Three wins will do that for you. That's going to happen. However, what I want to see... And the thing we were talking about last week as well was what happens now if the Warriors get a ton of points tonight? 
where well, does that see them sit? You they, know, they could probably but, jump up into second place. Because you want to find yourself not on the same side of the bracket as ground zero. Even if you beat them now, you still don't want to end up on the same side of the... Because if you do that, look, the Warriors, maybe they lose in, in the semis in playoffs if that's what this looks like, right? Because there's a little bit more on the line when it comes to playoffs. So I mean, I guess we'd have to wait and see. We'll have to wait and see indeed. But this is certainly unexpected and a potential for Warriors to jump a couple of spots up the leaderboard by the end of tonight. A lot at stake indeed. For now, though, we'll take a very quick break. But when we come back, more exciting Overwatch contenders action. We'll see you soon. Welcome back. It is week four of Overwatch Contenders Australia. The Warriors up against Ground Zero. Our first semi-final of the night. Ground Zero, week in, week out. Make their way through to the finals. Win 100 points. Put themselves up on top of the scoreboard. But this week, Jordan, is this going to be the week that Ground Zero did not achieve what they want to? Yes. I think it already is. The fact that they've lost two maps, surely, has to mean that it already is the week they haven't achieved what they wanted to. Well, maybe. Even if they go through and win the grand final from here of, of week four contenders, it's this is actually technically their worst week so far. Well, yes, but yes. it's easy to have your worst week when literally every week is winning. Yep. Yeah. This is true. Yeah. Disappointing though, so far from Crown Zero. Like, I mean, I don't know what to say about this. Good I don't want to like. You didn't take the deal where I get to give you a sick fade like mine. That's uh, definitely a good thing. I yes. did this myself, by the way. I uh, think everyone can tell. Everyone can tell. I'm doing my part, okay. Whilst we're all 
you know, staying at home and, and whatnot. I'm just, you know, I only, I literally, I see you. That's it. We hang out. We do casting. That's it. We're allowed two people over. I hang out with you. Um, and that's that's about it. So we keep it pretty safe. Mm. Uh, and that's why I cut my own hair. It's safe for, for everything about us apart from your hairstyle. That's all that's not safe right now. <laughs> Look, my hairstyle is going better than Ground Zero is right now. That's all I'm going to say. <sighs> That's a real harsh one. I mean, it, you, you know, the observers were calling them bots, but you've just basically thrown them in the dumpster. So I don't know what to say. I look. I think the Warriors are performing quite well, and I think this is uh, this is very exciting for me to see this growth of the Warriors as they progressed through, and maybe they end up uh, top three. Is by that the end of you, you were you were sort of having a look at the standings? Yeah. Is that so. Uh, look, I'm basing it off my recollection, but I think uh, Warriors were like 75 points. Mind Freak was 105 points. Uh, you know that Mind Freak are top four tonight at a minimum, so that puts them 35, which is 140. Uh, so to come second, 75 is 125 uh, for the 50 points a second. So that doesn't work. However, if the Warriors won tonight and get the 100, that puts them on 175. Um, which is either second or third, at are, minimum third. Are those standings not already considering the score lines that oh, are from this week? Maybe. I, I don't think know. from here, Warriors can be up to 180 ish points. Isn't that what I was saying? It is? Okay, good. Yeah. One, one, Just checking. 175, something like that. Yeah. Anyway, it's. Uh, it's hard. Math on stream, the, hard. Well, look, I don't know whether it counts or not, but the point is that they uh, victory tonight probably puts. Uh, any of the teams that aren't... If any team that isn't ground zero tonight wins tonight, yep. it probably puts them, like locks them in, probably second, if not top three. Either uh, way, yeah. it means you avoid ground zero, I would believe, based on uh, based on playoff bracket. I think if Drop Bears makes second uh, and Warriors makes first, then Drop Bears still take second overall. But that's something that we'll discuss, I guess, when we get to the yeah. end of today's broadcast. For now... It's all about avoiding ground zero when it really counts is in it, finals. Or is it about avoiding Warriors? Oh, no, I don't think so. I think playoffs are going to be different. But let's just see where the ground zero can start bringing this back. All I'm seeing right now is ground zero getting picked off one after another after another. It's like an action movie where you've got your, your superstar heroes coming through. And boom, boom, boom. One after another. No one can stop the Warriors right now. Dude, they've got a Torbjorn turret on the cart. I mean, what more can you really want out of this game from Warriors? August, he's chucked it off, so that's a bit disappointing. But Ground Zero are definitely struggling at the moment, and Warriors might just continue to roll on through here in Dorado. That turret causing so many problems. So zips down low, but he's healed back on up okay. Dies back on into the fight, and there goes Kuffa. You know what happens when you lose your main tank early. Generally, things tend to go pear-shaped from there. And that seems to be what is continuing as Sozip gets into an engagement with Signed. The rest of Warriors will deal with Ground Zero. And Ben, we are picking up where we left off here. It doesn't matter what we yeah, said in that halftime break. I've already watched this movie tonight. I know how this episode goes, Jordan. This is, uh, we just did this. Think about the fastest game this season. Mm. So far, this game is actually faster. Really? We're, we're pretty much balls to the walls right now. It's pretty fast. I'm not sure why it matters if you got your tennis balls to the wall, Jordan, but... Well, they bounce back. Yeah. But is Ground Zero going to bounce back? I don't know. I don't think so. Not based on what I'm seeing so far. They've got to do something. Uh, so zip lurking. Yeah, yep. Yeah, that didn't work. Let's try that one again. Sign versus so zip. We'll see who gets the better pulse bomb. Drake with the Coalescence. Terry with one as well. And Noz finds two. Along with the D-Mech, that's three, that's four. Big, big plays coming out from Noz on the Sigma. And the Warriors get the payload going once again. This is super quick. This is, uh, wow. The payload's barely stopping. It's like a McDelivery, Jordan. It just, it just gets there in record time. It's impressive. I don't even understand. How is it even possible? No delivery on the way for this this particular match, that's for sure. Sign, trying to do what he can, but with the beat drop now for the Warriors, we'll see where the CKM can get rid of it. Uh, yeah, that's not bad, hits four, that's a pretty good EMP. 
Is it going to be enough to turn this fight around, though? And that's the real question. Oh, not a good place to be fighting now for Ground Zero. August, he picks up his first and second kill with the ultimate onto Adam and Terry. I don't know if it's going to turn the fight back in the favor of Warriors, because there are still a couple of Ground Zero members here contesting, but in reality, Payload has pushed quite substantially forward. Even if Warriors do have to reset from here, they're probably happy with the progression that they have been making up to this point. Sign down very low, does get the recall on out, and in the end, Drake falls. I think Warriors just need to slow things down a little bit here, but they have managed to find themselves another pick onto Kuffa, so look, it's not all over at the moment. No. They not, keep fighting. Not yet. The Graffiti Flux came out, but I don't think it had the results it was looking for, and Sign will sign the fate of this particular fight with the uh, Pulse Bomb onto Nas, and Ground zero, 2.30 on the clock, managed to stop the payload just short of objective B, and now it starts slowly rolling backwards. But let's be real, Elfish guy, the Warriors, they've got a ton of time. They've got a ton of ultimates as well. It's gonna be up to Kaffer and CKM to come through and stop this fight once again. Once again, into the safety of the bank go Warriors, but it's not so safe, it would seem. So Zip drops early on in the piece, and we may be restoring a level of equilibrium here, Ben, once Ground Zero get their front foot forward. A lot of ultimates built on up, CKM and Kuffa in particular. The rest are looking good as well, but a quick resurgence from Warriors. They are not messing around here. They don't want to slow things down at all. Where's CKM with the EMP? Well, there's the uh, the beat, and there's the EMP, and there you go once again. The beat comes down, the EMP holding off to counter it, and two out of two CKM does a pretty good job. That coalescence, I don't know, Terry mate, whether that one was necessarily required, but nevertheless, they will win another fight, and finally. Ground zero, maybe, yep. finding their way. Definitely looking much better right now. There's a few little things there for Warriors that didn't seem to be going as planned. Not only Kuro throwing the beat in and then that instantly being cancelled by EMP, but August also invested his ultimate right as that fight seemed like it was already over for Warriors. Yeah. So I'm not sure. Maybe the comms just aren't quite there right now for Warriors at the moment, or they've gotten a little bit overconfident in this matchup. They just need to... Make sure that they go back to square one and go back to what they were doing on Busan and King's Row. Plus, I think CKM got the better of Sozip pretty quickly at the start of that fight as well. So, from the very beginning, it certainly was not going their way. Big self-destruct onto the high ground. Oh, finds August along with the turret. Again, not a great start for this particular fight. The Warriors will fall back. It looks like they're just going to try and hold here and wait for their player to come back. That's August swapping across. And Kaffa! He goes aggressive, but Drake comes through. I think Sozip had something to do with that also. And that's, that one that one little fight win, Jordan, puts the Warriors back on top. Yeah, might have been a bit over eager from Ground Zero to finish off the Warriors there. A big EMP, though, from CKM and a stick as well. Oh! It's a double kill from Sion. You thought for a moment, Ben, the Warriors would come back in and cap out point B, but Ground Zero is such an excellent... Excellent recontest. Great work. And so now the game is on. Ground Zero looking much better here on Dorado. The combination of the two DPS players and their ultis together. Saving the day. Putting them in a spot where surely Ground Zero could win from here. Surely. I mean, it's not a sure thing. If, uh, if Ground Zero don't win from here... I will give you a fate. <laughs> That's also not a bet that I'm willing to take. I could do such a good job. <laughs> you know I think they you're, you know you're like you know when you're in a relationship. They with charge extra for fates. It's like five dollars extra. Someone who's crazy, and you don't see it because you're so someone, in love with them. What someone who's? Are you saying you're that in love with me that you've only no, now I think, realized that I'm crazy? I think you are so in love with your haircut that you don't realize it's bad. <laughs> No, I think my hair was so long beforehand that it just didn't matter. It's still better. Anyway. Echo, are we back? I'm ready, because 
that's the one thing after last week, right? We saw so much echo in trials, and I was like, I'm ready. But there was no McCree. Yeah, no, no McCree, and that's it, right? Because obviously, a lot of the benefit of echo is the flying around, doing the pew pew pew. But uh, oh, disappointment. It's much harder to fly around if there's a McCree there to deal with you. Anyway. So I'd say it's imperative for Warriors to have a pretty solid hold here on point A. Even if they don't fully hold point A, their best chance of actually holding ground zero to a bit of a sort of pressure building time is yeah. going to be in phase A. Phase B, up, up to where they kind of got stopped, does tend to get pushed relatively comfortably. So if they can win a fight or two before we get under the bridge and then maybe another one or two after the bridge, that's where Warriors might be able to get themselves an advantage. It looks like they will completely give up control of the high ground though. So they're going for that hold all the way back in the market square. The thing is, we've seen a lot of teams actually hold pretty successfully on a Dorado, but uh, not necessarily against this ground zero lineup who do seem to have found their mojo here, Elfish guy. That is right indeed. On the aggressive is Warriors, and oh, it's not going to work out too nicely for them. So Zip's fallen early on in the piece. There's a few trades coming back on in here, but I don't know that this is going to work out too nicely for Warriors. One for ones are okay for Ground Zero, given they are the ones that have the faster respawn time, and they really do just seem to be waltzing their way through Dorado at the moment. That is not a contest at all. And gone are the discussions of any hold on point A, because that's been captured by ground zero very quickly indeed. Mm. CKM waking up on the Farah. And after all of that, at 94%, ready for a barrage, we swap across to Hanzo. Though, to be fair, you know how I feel about Rocket Barrage, particularly in Aussie contenders. You are a bit of a hater. Just doesn't. They just end up killing themselves more often, to be perfectly honest. Drake. Oh! Drake does use the Coalescence. You can see So Zip and August were pretty low. But Adam somehow manages to find the pick onto the support and follows that up with the Gravitic Flux. We'll see whether this is enough to get Ground Zero going through. I mean, this is not even close. Yeah. You know, like what, what did we see out of those first two maps and how have Warriors gone from the Busan 2-0 and the King's Row 3-1 to what we're seeing right now, where they're just essentially walking into ground zero and getting picked. I'm not sure. It's not been good at all here from Warriors on the defense so far. They no. haven't even... They, it's not It's not even close. They haven't even contested ground zero so far. Finally, a little bit of resistance. They've got control of the high ground. That card still continues to push forward. So Zip definitely should not be dying here. And we'll get healed back on up. That's a little bit of a stabilization from Warriors, but they don't have much room left to work with. Only 15 meters or so. Yeah, look, it hasn't been great for the Warriors so far. Ground Zero certainly uh, starting to uh, turn up the heat a little bit. Maybe they've just uh, they woke up. They got some nugs. I don't know. Quarter pounder meal. Not sure what it is, but something certainly changed. Perhaps a large frozen coke that normally uh, that all normally gets me going, Elfish guy, but. CKM. CKM. Filthy with the Storm Arrows. But so many ultimates here for the Warriors. Surely they can't win this fight. Well, it's just going to be really annoying trying to deal with CKM. In fact, Warriors are going to have to move out of that position shortly because Ground Zero is contesting the point. Dead oh, eye. great just signed. Precisely what they need, and that could be enough. Maybe they don't need to use anything else here to win this fight. Uh, Kura has fallen to Burtlock, so it's not a free win for Warriors here. Oh, nice! Got cancelled. Cancel culture is real with D.Va. That is for sure. Great work, and the uh, Blizzard comes from That's August. Good. Is it going to be enough? I'm not. I'm not 100% sure here because Adam, I think, came out with that Gravitic Flux, and uh, the Warriors have been finding the picks. Signed, throws out the Molten Core, yeah, well, but I mean, it doesn't really matter. Bit of an interesting one. I think Sign might be swapping off Torbjorn after Surely. that. Surely. That was, that was my thoughts as well. We're going to see something a little... Yep, we're he's waiting. thinking about it. That or he's AFK. There we go. Yeah, it was a bit of a strange uh, ultimate had he wanted to stay on Torbjorn. But yeah, Ground Zero are going to change things up. I mean, they still have a minute and 55. So I don't think we're teetering on the precipice just yet. Warriors... 
I've got a lot of work to do still, and there's plenty of time to find an ultimate rotation here for Ground Zero. Yeah, but they might only get one and a bit. Anyway, they're on the payload, and the Warriors will need to contest. They drop down and start this fight, a fight they theoretically should win. Quats was anti. Yeah, that's less than ideal with Quats going down. Right in the thick of things as well. Oh, so zip. That's a good shot, and a better Too good up shot. as well. That was a fight that could have potentially been lost, and I mean, to be fair, it still could be lost, but I think Sozip has just salvaged it there for Warriors. Yeah, big plays. This is where it starts to get difficult now for Ground Zero, because the respawn timers are more or less going to be favouring Warriors. Ground Zero haven't built too much up in that last fight, and they really only have time for this one final this solid is, fight. This is it, Jordan. This is where the Warriors take down Ground Zero. Right now, this is the easiest... This is it. This is all they have to do is uh, win the next two fights. Don't They're cast done. a curse at Ben. Don't cast a curse it's at It's all you have to do. Sows it with a great dead eye. I mean, he could put this game to bed with one good dead eye right yeah. now. Yeah. That could be it. It doesn't even need to be two fights, really. It just needs to be one. This is the final fight for Ground Zero. Well, yeah, Ground Zero have slowly made their way back. They are certainly putting all their eggs into this final fight basket. They're waiting perhaps for ultimates, but Kura's got the beat and CKM is still a little way off. We'll see what Terry can do. So Zip's having a look and checking to see whether CKM is floating around the side. Oh, so Zip took so much damage and eventually does go down to Kafa. August has thrown out the Blizzard. Will this turn the tide once again? Quats was anti, but this time will stay alive. The self-destruct from Noz. Sign will have the pulse bomb. CKM should have the That's EMP, and the beat comes out just that little bit early. But once again, countered by CKM. You look at Ground Zero. You see their players falling. You look at the Warriors. They seem to be getting the picks. They got the spawn advantage, and Drake with the Koa lessons. It's just now Kafa sitting here on the payload. And that is it, Elfish Guy. The Warriors, 3 and 0. I don't know what to say. Ben. Eliminate Ground Zero from Week 4. I killed themselves not, spot I, in the I final. did not believe that was going to happen, even all the way up until that final fight. I was thinking, there's a way. Ground Zero is going to come back into this nah. series. But now the result is on the board. I agree with you, Ben. Warriors, yeah, it's time for the shave, really. It really is time for the shave because I was not on the ball there at all. And Warriors have somehow 3-0 oh, and zero at ground zero. I just can't believe it. I'm, I'm astonished. Uh, one thing I do want to touch on there right at the end is Kura had a great beat, and you said maybe came down a little bit early. I'll counter that by saying I think it did what it needed to do, uh, which was to, to get the May out of that ice block. Sign was literally sitting right next to May as he was sitting in the ice block. They threw down the beat. May comes out of the ice block, uh, and the Pulse Bomb doesn't end up actually killing... Uh, I think it was August in the end there that probably would have been playing May for, for Warriors. So great stuff in the end from Warriors, and gee, I don't know. I'm impressed, but uh, Ground Zero, wh what, like, where have they gone? Uh, tonight, in the bid, is where they've gone. But let's be real. Let's not take too much out of this. Ground Zero, we all know that it doesn't matter who does what tonight. They're still going to come through with 300 points. They won three weeks in a row. They're the top seed in the comp. They'll finish tonight the top seed in the comp. They'll finish tonight ready to come through in the best possible position for playoffs. But are there now questions? It's one thing to lose. Uh, but this is the second interesting result out of this week's brackets off the back of... Uh, Kraken going down as well. And I think the Warriors just played really well. They look good. Yeah. This, mostly. This is crazy. I mean, could Warriors actually win a week of contenders? It would. After, you know, basically not even being able to... It's the best week to win as well, I think. <laughs> you reckon it is? Yeah. Probably. Uh, you know what I think they should do is they should, like, have the last week's weighted a bit heavier than the earlier weeks, right? If you win week one, maybe you get 80 points. And you win week four, you get 120 or something like that. And just to kind of give the teams that are peaking at the right time into to playoffs a little bit of a leg up, maybe a bit of better seating. I think that could be a cool concept to kind of think about. But either way, Warriors, I'm sure you if wanna, they... Do you want to call? Yeah, I'll give them a call uh, after the game. But uh, if Warriors, you know, do manage to make it through that grand final, which they have, and they win that grand final, I'm sure they'll be happy to, to pick up the 100 points. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, who knows what can happen. Obviously, we've got Sydney Drop Bears and Mind Freak up next, but they would have both been, I think, kind of wanting to get that game against Grand Zero in the final or expecting to get that great game against 
against well, Ground Zero in the final, and now that's been ripped away that, by that's Warriors. That's the thing, right? Because if you if you are Mind Freak or the Drop Bears, if Ground Zero win that game, there is no way that the Warriors can come second or third, right? There is nothing after that point. That's it. It doesn't even matter how their game goes. That's it. It's out of the question. And you know then that you're on the safer side of the bracket. You, you're not versing ground zero if you do start winning your way through playoffs. Now, that's all. Is anywhere safe, air. right? Is anything safe at this point? Can one random team just come in and blitz everyone? I mean, the answer apparently well, is yes. that is the very nature of a playoff you bracket, right? You can throw right? all of your assumptions out the window. To be fair, that is how you wait the end of the season, more importantly, is that the playoff bracket is the, the be-all and end-all. Let's go and take a look at our Macca's play of the game. A McDonald's Australia play of the game. It was the Warriors up against Ground Zero. And even when Ground Zero loses Jordan, Sign still gets a Macca's play of the game. Look at this. Big play. Boom. Double yeah. double kill coming through on the pulse bomb. Let's be real. CKM did a pretty good job as well with a decent EMP. I think, uh, obviously, Sign gets Macca's play of the game there. But Noz might be the MVP of that play because I'm pretty sure he's just jumped into his teammate while he's had a pulse bomb on top of him. So that's not made life easy for uh, his, uh, his teammate. There, doesn't work like in the movies, right? Where no. you're like, I'm, I'll jump on the grenade I'll, for you. I've got the, don't worry, guys. I've got the pulse bomb. Oh, yeah. yeah. So they're both done. Uh, anyway, great work for, for Sign. You know, he was the, the spotlight for this week and yeah. um, MVP here as well. So... I don't know how, how comfortable um, Ground Zero will be feeling after that one, but I suppose they just have to sort of cop it on the chin, move forward, yeah. and uh, take the loss and focus on playoffs. Well, they'll get to watch our next game. It's going to be Mind Freak G up against the Sydney Drop Bears. This is their best shot at winning a finals this week. Now that Ground Zero is out, potentially, this is their week as well. We're going to take a quick break, come back. Semi-final two of week four. We'll see you soon. Stealth. In trouble. Oh, Oswald here we go. Through. Great work on to Terry, who was halfway through a coalesce, throwing out ulties. Noz is eating CKMs. That's a pretty big play. Just like Diva, except better. Oh, so zip. Filthy. Round through the bookstore. Big plays. August. Good freeze on a large majority of those ground what? zero players. And again, it's just a clean wipe. What is going on? Quartz, I'm not sure if that was the target we were looking for. The Warriors off the back of that do manage to stand here with a bit of a defense, Drake and that coalescence and so zip. We were just on top. Yeah, might have been a bit over eager from Ground Zero to finish off the Warriors there. Big EMP though from CKM and a stick as well. Oh! The double kill from Sion. You thought for a moment, Ben. The Warriors would come back in and cap out point B, but Ground Zero is such A for Ground Zero given they are the ones that have the faster respawn time, and they really do just seem to be waltzing their way through Dorado at the moment. That is not a contest at all. Diva, that is for sure. Great work, and uh, Blizzard comes from That's August. Good. 